Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Leigh Bella Ralston. On behalf of Faber Castell USA, I would like to welcome everybody and would like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, it's nice to have you join this class because it's going to be very calming and also very um, informative because today we are going to play and look around one of uh, as an artist a tool that I use daily I mean that's not exaggerating I really do use brush pens almost on a daily so hello and welcome everybody happy happy September oh my gosh it's the month of September already and it's super exciting like what Carrie said there's so many fun things happening and of course um hopefully uh, a better cooler <laughs> um temperature will start coming in so hello everyone we have a lot of friends joining in this afternoon thank you so much for sharing where you're watching and joining us from we have friends from colorado minnesota chicago um Hello there. Hi, Lakita. Hello, my friend. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Patricia. Hello, everybody. Okay, so brush pens. Like what I've said, brush pen is something that I use on a daily, whether um, it is for lettering. Um, and then I also use it for doodling all my doodles. And then I use it for coloring, you know, so we have different types of brush pens in front of me today. Um, and these are, of course, from Faber Castell. Uh, and we're going to look at them. And then maybe at the end of this session or this class, you'll have a much better understanding what type of brush pen um, fits you the most, you know, um, so we'll talk about where I use it, personally use it, and what are my, I, I want to say that I want to share which one is my favorite, but it might be a little difficult because um, I don't think I can pick one. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, I've also included um, a sheet that you can print at home and then, but you, it's not really necessary, but I thought it figured, you know, we can kind of put in, use it for the different types of brush pens that we have today. And then we can kind of break it down, which one is going to be something that will fit your needs. So this is something that's brand new. This is uh, coming soon. This is the black edition. So it's it wasn't part of the picture that I have prepared because I just received these. So these are fairly new to me. So we're going to take a look at them, you know, together later and we'll we'll see what it's all about. But um, we have done many different types of classes also when it comes to these brush pens that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, one of my very first product from Faber-Castell USA is the Faber-Castell Pit artist pen. Faber-Castell's been around for ages, as old as the trees. <laughs> so since uh, 1761. That's, that's kind of crazy, you know, think about it. All right. And then we have here, these are, these are also fairly new. These are the gold Faber Aqua dual markers. So, and then we are going to look at the Faber-Castell Albert Dürer watercolor markers. All right. And then we're also going to look at, same as the Pit Artist, but this is what we call the big brush. So same, we're going to look at the inks, what are the inks, what are they made of, and, and things like that. So how about we start with the Pit Artist pens, because this is the one that I have been using for a very long time. And so I thought I'd share with you. So again, this worksheet is not necessary if you don't have it it's okay it really is okay so, so like what I said we have done many different types of classes when it comes to brush lettering we started with brush lettering 101 and lately we have been um, playing with the bounce lettering style of brush lettering brush pen is really a fun tool because it is something that you can create variation of strokes from thin to thick because let's gonna go look at this one so we can look at brush tip real close i have prepared a third camera for us so as you can see this is the pit artist pen and this one it has the most is the smallest tip of all so it uses a felt felt 
And also not a lot of people know that when it comes to the pit artist pen, I'm, I'm sorry if you're seeing me looking for something, I'm trying to see if I have any tweezer in here, but I don't think I do. But the Pit Artist Pen, what's special about it is that not a lot of people know this, is that you can actually, I'm going to go use another color that's not so inky. So you can, if you have a tweezer, you have the tool, I don't have the tool at the moment, you can actually pull the nib like this. So I can, I'm going to try and pull it. Uh. So maybe you should get a nib for this, a, a tweezer for this. So you can pull it like this and then flip it. You get two nibs in one pen. Isn't that so cool? Like what I said, not a lot of people know that. So if you feel like you, you're frayed and you've kind of damaged the surface of your felt tip already, then you get another nib extra. So you just flip it, get a tweezer and flip that. And then you get a brand new fresh nib on the other end of that. So I'm going to go switch over. We're going to go put it here. This is the pit. Artist. Pens. All right. So I'm just looking at the chat right now. I printed the worksheet, but only have four FC pens. It does, it's okay. If you only have the um, pit artist pens or whichever one you have, it's okay. We'll just have fun today. We'll look at it. We'll, we'll play around with it. And we'll kind of, um, if you have any questions, I'm looking at the chat so we, I can answer, help you answer some of those. So let's look at the price, the cost of the pit artist pens. So looking at the Michael's website, we have it available from four, 49 to 4.99 right because we're going to break this all down okay um the pit artist pens are not refillable so they aren't all right so the type of ink okay let's talk about the ink of the pit artist pens i think this is what sets the pit artist pens you know, very separate from every, everything else because it is so unique. It uses an India ink. So India ink, I don't, I think it's the only marker in the market that uses India ink. India ink is archival. Archival, which means that it will not fade over time. So if that is something that is important to you, then I think you're going to love it. It also dries really fast. Uh, unlike other markers and other pens that I've used, I end up with smudge. And this is me, I'm a righty, right? So I don't have to worry about that, but I'm also very impatient, especially when I'm doing a lot of blending and all that. I, I can't wait to kind of move to the next part of you know the job of whatever it is I'm working on, whether it's coloring or my lettering. Um, I'm very impatient. So I kind of like, I don't like a lot of drying time. So the, um, the India ink, they dry super fast. Another one, if you're a journaler, you say, if you journal, if you love doing Bible journaling, if you love um, bullet journaling, or just any type of journaling, the pit artist pens are great because they do not bleed through. And this is coming from um, someone that has tried many different types of notebooks. Um, I, I test, so I really, I have tried this pen, don't bleed through. So one thing that I love about it is there's no smell. It is archival. It is waterproof. And it also dries super fast. Okay. So that's the ink. Does it smear? No, it doesn't smear. So it won't exactly. So archival is like, so if you're, to me, my journals, I mean, I have shared this in the past. We've looked at some of my um, journals. I've shared some with you. And to me, it's very important that these notebook, notebooks, I should say, these notebooks last a very, very long time because it's something that I want to pass on to the next generation, you know? So waterproof is so important. If it gets, you know, gets wet, then I know that the 
words in there, my poems, my songs, my, my thoughts are going to stay in there. It's not going to get faded over time and um, it's going to be safe. So I really love that. Um, they have very beautiful colors. Now the indie inks is going to be different than the based water-based dye inks, right? So we're going to look at that later. We're going to compare all of them, but let's move on a little bit. Size. All right. So when it comes to size, like what I said, this is the one that has the smallest tip of all. So which means, but it doesn't mean that you cannot create a wider stroke because it is a brush pen. So you can create variety of strokes from thin to thick. And by this test paper, you're going to see like a little faded gray area in here because we're going to test it. How thin and how thick can you create by applying, of course, um, different type of pressure from light to heavy. So size, I'm going to say this is from small slash medium. I'm going to say small. All right, so we're going to test it out here. I'm just going to do a little bit of thin stroke, which is an upstroke. So you can see how thin you can get. Very thin. And then now if I switch how I handle my brush pen, notice how it's not upside down anymore. It's slanted so I can create some thicker stroke because we're going to use the body of the brush pen. If I apply a little bit more pressure, this so you can get from thin to medium to much thicker one, right? Okay, let's switch color so you can see better. Let's do the thin again. This is concentrating on the tip of the brush. And then I'm gonna go switch over, apply a little bit of pressure and really use that body of the pen to create your thick. Like that. So now if we wanna do create some Thin and thick, this is what's gonna happen. Let's see how thick it's going to be. Thick, using the tip, thin, thick, thin, like that. So now let's talk about snap and bounds. What does this mean? I'm gonna go close up so we can see. Let's see how much you can bounce. I'm going to go bend it. See how you can bend the brush so you can get a little bit more bounce. And does it snap? Yes, it does. Does it come back to its original? I think so. I mean, even if you put some pressure in there and it goes back to its original place. So I really, I really, really like that because Sometimes some brush pens, the body of the brush pen doesn't bend very much. So what's happening is that you're ruining the very tip of the brush pen. You're putting in a lot of pressure on that very tip. So what happens is that it gets much harder to create thinner because you're, you've already frayed the tip of that pen. So with the pit artist pens, I really think that it's a great advantage that the whole the whole brush bends and snaps. You can easily, it's very flexible like this. And then you go bend up and then use the tip and then you bend it down to create that thicker line, right? So I really like that. Perfect. I'm so glad that we've changed to the teal color. All right. So let's look at how the difference from the thin and the thick. Thin and that thick. So you can get really thin lines with this one. Right now I'm going to try and use the Pit Artist, the word practice in here. And so we're gonna concentrate on this one. 
applying some pressure going up. Like this. Now, when do I use the Pit Artist pens? Without, you know, without being biased. <laughs> This is a marker that I use every day. Again, for my, I am such a paper person, pen and paper thing, pe person, blah, 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 pen and paper person. I love writing my notes, even though um, I have written it probably two days ago. If I need something done today, I would write it down again. And the pit artist is something that I really, I have it all beside me I don't know if we can no I can't but it's something that I have in my purse I have many different um, especially the black one I carry it all the time it is my favorite marker like what I said for doodling it, because the India ink does not bleed so I don't have to be so picky with the paper I hope that makes sense because um, some markers that I have I love them but then what, if I use a different notebook, then I know I'm going to have bleed through on the other page. And it's just, I don't, I don't like that. I don't prefer it. Um, so pit artists, I think if I can choose from all of these markers, is it too early to say, but I think the pit artist is my favorite. Okay. So let's set that aside and we'll move on to the next one. Now let's, let's look at the other pit artist pen, but the big brush pens. So this is the big brush. So with the same ink, we have the same India inks. We'll write it down here. This is a brand new marker. So the brush tip is still very fresh. And I'm gonna show you. That's why I was able to get some very thin strokes in here because the, the brush is so new and fresh because it's brand new. So I can really get some very clean, thin strokes. I love it. So let's call it the big brush. Now, when do I use the big brush? Since the pit artist is my favorite, when do I, when do I reach out for the big brush? It's when I'm doing a much larger type of lettering. So we're gonna look at that later here so you can see the difference of the thicker because you're because it is bigger, because you're using a much bigger brush, then you're stepping up, you're getting a much larger strokes, okay? So that's because I also write very big. And when I do my lettering, they're also big as well for projects, for um, artwork and all that but when it comes to just bullet journaling in my notebook just writing notes I reach out for the smaller pit artist pens now when I'm working when it comes to big lettering projects then I reach out to the big brush okay so for the cost of the big brush I'm going to look at here on my side or this is from Michael 749 to 999 these are also um, available open stock. So if you can see, you know, if there's just a color that you like here and there, I think that's a bonus because for example, if I have to buy a marker, um, in sets all the time, I have my favorite colors. I don't know about you. I love bright colors. So I don't feel like I have to brush. I have to buy a brush set of 12 or six just to buy one color that I like. So having it open stock, it's really a big, big bonus. Okay, so here I'm going to say this is really large. So I'm going to go medium to large. But if you're careful with the amount of pressure that you use, then you can still create thin stroke. Look at that. Look at the difference from the thin and that thick. Now, it just depends on how you hold your marker. So we're going to do, this is a medium. We're going to create thin strokes. Let's look at this much closer. Look at that. Using the tip of the marker and applying very light pressure. Like that. Now, if I'm going to hold my pen angled around 45 degrees, 
we're going to use the body, then we can create a much thicker stroke like that. Um, I've had these markers for a while and I don't think maybe one that I have replaced is the purple, the lilac color, just because I love it. I use it as a highlighter. <laughs> I use it as a marker. So this one, I think I have gone through, I think this is my third one to be honest. So, um, but that was a long time and I use it, like what I said, almost every day. This is my highlighter. This is the lilac color is just hands down my favorite color. I know it's hard to see and I'm sorry, <laughs> just because it was my favorite. So that's the one I reach out to the most. Um, uh, no, the do now, this is the difference from the pit artist. This one does not have a dual tip. Okay. So you cannot pull it don't try to pull it. <laughs> There's nothing that's going to come out. You're just going to uh, ruin your marker. But you know what? Have I done that before? You want to try it? Do you want to try do one? I'm going to try color and I'm going to grab a, I'm going to grab a tweezer. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to choose a color that is, is in my favorite because I don't want to ruin the marker. <laughs> All right. No, I like that much more yellow. So since it is an India ink, it's the same thing. You are going to get an archival. It's going to be, oh my God, it might be. It might be ruined. Nope. We are not going to try that. <laughs> I cannot pull it. I'm going to try again. Nope, guys, please do not try to pull out the nib of your big brush. Okay. So <laughs> we do not do that. But I wanted to try it for you guys. So here is the yellow one. Ooh, look at the yellow and the teal. They look good together. It's really nice, but it's hard to see in the camera. Thank you. And I'm sorry, big brush. If I hurt you. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm here for is for us to try that. So we're not going to try that again. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the next one, snap and bounce. Now, this is, again, another difference from the pit artist pens. I feel like I don't get enough of that bounce that I get from the small pit artist um, it's just the pit artist pens is so different than any other markers that I have tried, even from other brands. Okay. So it's very different. I have, I haven't tried something that has a bounce like the pit artist, unless it is kind of like one of those synthetic brushes, then of course that's a different thing. But when it comes to just, uh, felt tips, I haven't tried anything like the pit artist. So let's look at the bounce and the snap of the big pit artist pens. So you look at it closely. So we're going to go do that. So there's not a whole lot of bounce in here. The bounce is just concentrated on the tip. And that's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. So if I put in a lot of strain and a lot of pressure, you're going, we're going to ruin that tip very, very fast. So what you want to do is if you want to create a thin and a thick line, this is where how you hold your marker is going to be really important. So when I go try to do the thin, notice how my marker is almost like upside down, kind of like when you're writing naturally. So it's almost upside down like this. Like that. And then I kind of slant it to create a thicker line. So that, and see how it's so important to kind of look at that snap and bounce, what matters to you the most, do you feel like, and I think it's not always, um, if it's a positive for me, it may not be a positive for you, because again, we're all so different. Maybe to you having that bounce is a negative because you feel like 
I can't get enough control. You know, I feel like I don't have enough control over the marker. It's much harder. So a positive for me may mean negative to you or a negative to me may mean positive to you, vice versa, you know? So, but it's important to kind of look at that and see and feel and like, oh, you know what? I think that one works for me. Okay. So let's just try a little bit from the thin and thick so we can test it out a little bit more. So let's do a little bigger, thick. Like that. All right, and then let's try and write the word practice. Like that. I would like for you to kind of take notice of how I am writing. I am writing everything one stroke at a time. I stop in there and I stop in here. That. Stop. Because brush lettering is totally different from your hand lettering. I mean, brush lettering is totally different from doing a cursive. There you go. I should change that. Because if we're doing a cursive, we're going to write the word practice like this. Right? Notice how I didn't lift that pen from the paper because cursive was invented so that we can write faster. Okay. So when you're doing hand lettering or brush lettering, it is actually the art of drawing your letters. All right. So let's move on. This one is, again, the fairly new. This is the Gold Faber Aqua Dual Markers. I am going to change the color because it might be hard to see. We'll try a different color in here, much easier. So this is the Gold Faber Aqua Dual Markers. So Aqua, it is a water-based dye inks, okay? So this one is dual. You get a brush on the other end. And then you're going to get a 0 0.6 tip on the other. So if you're someone who likes to journal, uh, do some journaling, writing, lettering, you know, coloring, I think this is something that you're going to really love um, because you can use the 0 0.6, the fine tip for just, you know, regular writing. Um, and then you can use your brush tip on the other for your beautiful brush and hand lettering and also for coloring in your doodles and your um, artwork. So going to shut this one. Okay, so this is the Gold Faber Aqua. It's a little long. Okay, and then this one um, at Michael's website is available for set of six for seventeen twenty one. But this is also available open stock at FaberCastell.com for three dollars and forty nine cents. See, you notice the jump of from the price, right? From the pit artists, we are looking at $7.49. And we have the small pit artist pen starts from $4.49. Um, now, let's talk about the type of ink. It uses a water-based dye ink.
having aqua water base the gold favor aqua because again this is where the negative and the positive you know can be total opposite because some would say well i don't like that because it's not waterproof but then there's a pro when it comes to that because because it is not water, because it is not water, you can actually use it kind of like a watercolor because you can blend it, you know, play around with it. I think I have some water brush in here that we can use to test it out. Of course, there's no water. Oh, I have it. So we're going to test that with some water. Here, I have a little bit of water left. and some water brush in here. So to some people, it might be a negative because they say, well, I can't use it for with watercolor. Well, well you can use it as a watercolor. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to apply the gold favor in here like that. I'm going to go pick up some water. And then you can blend it like this. So if you like to do some blending, you know, um, then you can use some water for that. But not a lot of people know because the Pit Artist Pens is a water-based India ink, right? So you can still blend this with some water. The thing with the pit artist pens is because they dry fast. Remember we talked about it drying fast. So you have to work much, much faster, but yes, you are still able to blend it. As long as you move Superwoman, then you'll still be able to use <laughs> water and all that. But yeah, those are the fun, fun things that we like. We're going to talk about today. So let's see, I'm going to blend two colors of the aqua in here let's, let's see. like this and we're going to add some dark right and then we're going to use a little bit of water to just blend it so if we're going to do some fun blends when it comes to lettering this is going to be a really positive thing because then you're going to have like smooth gradients, much easier blending. Um, however, you're going to use another set of tool, which is the water brush or a watercolor brush and all that, but that, so you can blend it and play around. So it's kind of like having, um, two tools in one. You have a pen because you have the 0 0.6 fine pit end. And then you have a brush pen to create some beautiful thin and thick strokes. And then you also have a coloring medium, you know, to color in um, your stamped images, your doodles and all that. And you can use it kind of like a watercolor. So if you have like a smooth surface, uh, if you have a silicone mat, if you have an, an artist palette, then you can use that um, as a watercolor. So you can create and blend your own colors. So that means also means that you don't have to buy a whole lot of colors. If you know how to mix your colors to create like beautiful blends, then that's it, right? So you have, you can have many different types of colors at your disposal. So it is not waterproof. No, it is not because it is a fun water-based dye inks. Now, the difference of the price is because the water base, they are not archival. So it means that your artworks and your journaling pages might fade over time. You can also not color in your beautiful artwork and sell. And then because it will fade over time, the pit artist pens, this is an artist grade tool. So when you buy it, you know that this is something that you can sell something professionally and know that it was withstand the test of time. So that's one of the major things that I really want to point out because I think it's very important. But if you are on a budget, um, you want to have a brush pen that can do three things or many more, it depends on your imagination. You have the fine tip for writing, you have the brush tip for your beautiful brush lettering, and then you also have a 
a coloring medium because you can use it as a watercolor. So it's always fun. Now let's talk about the snap and the bounds. Um, to me, the snap and the bounds when it comes to this uh, brush pen is very similar to the um, the big pit artist. It doesn't have a whole lot of snap and bounds, but it has a bit more than the big pit artist. So we're going to look at this thin and then thick. So there's a little bit extra flex than the big pit artist pens. So you see, but I feel like you're, it's also still very concentrated on the tip of the brush. But if you will notice that there's a bit more flex in there than the other one that we were using earlier, right? So this one, I would say it is kind of like the size of the Big Pit Artist. It is from medium to large. Like that. I love using these markers to create kind of like watercolor backgrounds. It's super, super fun. So very, very thin stroke to a very thick stroke. And that is the beauty of a brush pen. It's just so versatile. I know it is, you know, it's, it's fun, but also can be very frustrating at first, especially if you're a beginner. I remember when I was first, you know, learning how to work with a brush pen and I remember how frustrating it was. So it, I think it is very important to mention that when it comes to the Gold Faber Aqua, I have tried other markers before that is has a little bit more flex, but also, which means for beginners, that it might be a little difficult to handle. Kind of like what we talked about, remember, um, maybe the positive is negative to you. So I think it's important to point that out also that with this one, I think you get the most, I think you get the easiest one to handle when it, if you're a beginner or if you're a professional already, if you've been practicing a very long time, you're going to notice that I wish that there's a little bit more flex to it. But then if you're a beginner, I think you're going to really enjoy that. It's going to be much easier to handle to create your thin and your thick strokes. All right. So let's try a little bit larger in here and see how large and how, how wider can the stroke get. All right. So concentrate on the thin. And then I'm going to bend that marker to really get that. Wow. See the difference? That is really big. I almost want to say that you can go from medium to extra large in here. I can really see that. I know, Lakita, right? It's so fun. Let's show everybody how they can create a watercolor background. Real easy. All right, so I'm going to get a, a packaging piece of plastic in here. And I'm going to add a light blue. And I'm going to use the water brush. I'm just going to add some water on top of this. Like that. And then we're just going to do a smooshing thing. It's like smooshing. Just like that. All right. Look how fun that is. You can create like a fun background. So if you're doing a little bit of journaling, that's a fun extra exercise you can do now just gonna add some water now because this is not waterproof okay so it's important to point this out also every time the water touches this any part of your lettering or your project you're, it's always going to blend and always going to react with the water. So that is why, to me, the pit art is, is extra special. But then again, it depends on how I need it and how I'm using it and what I'm using it for. This is the pit artist. No matter what you do, 
that is going to stay there. It's not going to move. It is going to be permanent, right? So with a water-based dye inks, anytime this gets touched by water, it's going to react with water. So if it's something that it's valuable to you and you don't want it to blend, you don't want it to move, maybe seal it with something, you know, um, use uh, any type of sealer. If it's a, um, it's a very important uh, art for you, but I don't foresee you doing that with every page in your journal. So let's just be honest. So, but those are little things, you know, we're just discussing things here. So you're aware. I think it's important to, to point that out. Okay. All right. So now next we have, this is another artist grade product from Faber-Castell. This is the Faber-Castell, the Albert Durer watercolor markers. So watercolor markers. Yes, these are watercolor pigments in a marker form, right? So the price of this one is from $8.99. So it comes in different type of sets, but it's also available open stock, okay? So one thing I love about these markers is that, again, they are archival, which I know that it's going to sound kind of like repetitive, but if you're going to sell your beautiful artworks someday, you want to make sure that you're, you use an archival product, right? Because it's not going to fade over time. So watercolors, this one is not going to be waterproof when it's... Um, it's not going to be waterproof when it's dry because it's always watercolor. So which means it's always going to be water soluble and it's going to always react with water. One of the, um, the, the biggest selling point is that it is archival. It is high light fastness, which means it's not going to fade over time. It is also dual. So you get a brush pen on this end. So you get a brush tip. And I think the brush tip of this one is very similar to the Pit Artist, probably shorter. So this one. So the one on the left is Albert Durer watercolor markers and the one on the right is the Pit Artist pen. So I think it's important to see that. And we're gonna look do this later before we end up our class so we can just look at all the brush tip. Okay, so watercolor. So I'm just gonna put in A, D, Albrecht Durer. On the other end is a bullet tip. So this one, I feel like this is a 2.0. So you know, not your regular 1.5. So you get a 2.0 tip in here. So water color. markers feels very good though the tip because it has a felt tip as well so again open stock it is available for eight dollars and 99 per marker the type of ink is watercolor pigments I'm going to say this one is kind of like almost a medium to a large as well. But then it's because you get a 2.0 <laughs> bullet tip. So you can use it for like writing. <laughs> I'm going to say bullet journal bullet tip. Is it waterproof? It is not waterproof. I'm gonna to say too large. Right, now let's look at how thin and how thick can we get using these markers. So get closer to this camera. This one I have used a lot. This is a loved marker here. And then I'm gonna switch over to the side, holding it 45 degree angled and get really thick in there too. So let's do some test when it comes to thin and thick.
Whoa, I can't get a spin. Like that. I feel like my tip of the marker is already frayed, so I'm having a hard time getting a thinner strokes. Now let's look at. So you get this beautiful watercolor, especially if you're using a watercolor marker. Now I'm just using a regular copy paper in here. It's best to use a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper when using these markers because you want to make sure that you get that beautiful um, translucent color of watercolors, right? So it's not going to be as vibrant as a water-based dye inks because they are very different from using a watercolor pigments. Watercolors, we use watercolors because we love that translucent look. And with the dye inks, you get a very opaque, concentrated colors. And so, yes, there are many different types, but it's just also, we want to try everything right? that's available for us. And also, these are just the tools. So what's important is you. Again, you know, it's up to your imagination how you're going to use these tools available for you. So, but this is what I'm here for is just, I want to share with you many different types of tools as much as we can, because um, these are something that ignites the creativity, that inspiration. It's like, you know what, I can do it with this marker or something like that. You know, it's, it's always fun. All right. Now let's talk about the snap and the bounds. Snap and the bounds. I'm going to say it's very similar to the big pit artist pens. I don't think I can snap and bounce very much in here. Again, the concentrate is on that tip. I'm going to go over like this so you guys can see. So I cannot bend it so much. Like that. See, that's hard. So there's not a lot of flexing. There's not a lot of bending um, happening here, but you can still get thin and thick because it is a brush pen. So let's try and write the word practice. Oh, this brush is really loved. Again, because you probably have heard me said this, say this so many, many times, I write so heavy that I can damage my brush pen so easily. And I try to be careful, but <laughs> I don't think I do a whole, a, a great job. Most of the time, it's just, I just write super heavy. But this is the Albert watercolor markers. Okay, so what do we have? And like, do you so we've gone through type, four. Do you need a specific type of paper for the pit artist pens? For the pit artist pens, um, no. I mean, I have shared my favorite types of um, marker paper. This is one of them. But for journals, uh, I love anything that is smooth. So um, I love the Japanese papers. Those are, I think, the best papers in the world. <laughs> um, but then again, that is my humble opinion. Uh, and then, of course, marker pads. If it's very smooth, this one from Strathmore is really good. This is from their 500 series. This is that um, semi-translucent, the one that kind of we used before. This is the best one that I have tried um, for the Pit Artist pens. The colors blend so beautiful. Now, I will not use my water-based inks in here. Um, I would use a mixed media paper, a smooth mixed media, or a marker pad. But for the Albert Dura watercolor markers, I will definitely use a watercolor paper with this one because then you can really see the granulation of the watercolor pigments. It's just... It's just so beautiful. For the Pit Artist Pens, I think this marker pad is my favorite. Um, for a cheaper alternative, you can buy um, an HP. It's just a laser copy paper. It's an HP laser copy paper um, that you can buy, you know, um, anywhere. 
So that's a good one because it has a very smooth surface. You're not going to hurt your brush pen, um, especially if you're just going to practice a whole lot. You don't want to spend a whole lot of money for, you know, the expensive ones, but also you want to make sure to invest a little bit because you want to take care of your investment, which are your brush pens. I hope that makes sense. Now let's look a little bit of these um, black edition. These are brand new. I don't think these are available at Mar Michael's yet, but it's coming very soon. So watch out for that. So these are the black edition pastel colors. Look how beautiful these colors are. I received this kind of like a week and a half ago. So I haven't really had the chance to play around very much. We have, go we're going to have a lot of upcoming classes using these markers. So look how pretty the colors are. And I have tried them. And I think, you know, with, with some markers that I have tried and they say pastel colors, but if it is a water-based dye inks, the colors are still going to be super opaque. Now that's the difference of using the India ink and then a water-based dye because the India inks are kind of like watercolors. They're very translucent, which means you can layer on top of your first application or your first layer under painting of what you call it, then you can layer on top of it to make it a bit more opaque and more saturated. So it's, it's kind of like working with watercolors, you know, you can work in layers and then add another layer to make it more opaque. It's just so fun. But again, different types of inks means different type of application and usage, right? So let's look at this a little bit um, real quick before we go. And I'm going to use, you might have a hard time seeing so i'm going to try and choose which one is the best one to use maybe the coral one all right camera here we go very pretty colors remind me of yummy desserts and macaroons mm, yummy all right so this is the super soft brush definitely has more flex to it you can definitely I can definitely feel that there's a bit more flex than the other ones, than the dual brush. It feels really, really good. Super. So there's that soft, um, there's that bounce to that. The brush. That feels really good. That you don't feel like you're hurting the nib again, because I'm also using my a very smooth paper. That is one of the difference, but we're going to look and dive into this more. I'm going to have to use it a bit more so I can have um, a better judgment because I haven't used it. Um, I haven't used it quite a lot. So I want to make sure that I use it before I share it with you. But so far, I feel like there's a bit more flex in the other ones, but when it comes to bending and flexing, I think the Pit Artist Pen is still my favorite. So let's try a little bit of blending so we can show you. And it's we're going to start with the black color. Now it's going to be really light, might be a little hard to see, but we're going to try it. So again, the look how much flexing I'm doing with this Pit Artist. Can you guys see that? Now that's some flex right there. Look at that. And then I'm gonna go do a little bit of blending. Blending takes patience, but the result is going to be stunning. It just takes patience. Like that. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. Um, the India inks, yes. So they are trans, they're much, much lighter. I can't say that maybe the word translucent is a wrong word to use. Um, but because they are semi-opaque, so if you're going to use it, you want to make sure that um, you go over it if you want a more saturated, more opaque colors. 
But with me personally, I love that they are the way they are. <laughs> I love that it's semi-opaque and translucent because it means that sometimes I don't want I don't want something like in my face right away, you know, unless I want it to be that way. Because look at this letter B. I don't know why our camera is having a hard time picking up. So I'm going to try and apply this one. So I'm going to show you what it's going to look like with different layers. I think it's important that you guys see that. So this is our first layer. I'm going to go do this and I'm going to zoom us so you can see. All right. So that's one layer of the Pit Artist Pen. Now we're going to add two layers in here. I'm going to do half and half. So we have second layer. And this is what I said about what I mean about you can work in layers. Now that's my third layer. This is my fourth. And I'm just using the same color. You're going to work. And then you can just keep adding. And then if you're happy with that, amount of saturation or opaqueness in there. See how translucent that is, but that means you can make it more brighter, more opaque by just adding more layer. And that means if you're gonna do some blending and you have a limited amount of pit artist pens, you know, which means this is like one color. And then by just adding another layer of your it's like half two colors in that and without having to add another dark purple like this because you can already create a beautiful gradient by just adding more extra layer on top of this one. See, I can go deeper. It's gotten deeper. And then I can add another one if I want to. Go a bit more deeper. It's just so fun. So yeah, if you have any questions, if you have any questions for me, we're going to look at this. I'm going to go zoom out just a little bit. So we have, oops, I think I zoomed out a little bit too much. All right. The water, the water-based dye inks. Yes, they are definitely much, much opaque. So I think it would be fair if we get similar colors. Might not be the same color, but I'm going to try. I'm going to go definitely not the same color. <laughs> Just the same. I grabbed the same color. <laughs> but when I say translucent, it's really not faded. You know, it's... It's almost like it's just a very beautiful muted colors. But then look, when you add a deep colors, they're still very opaque. Um, so it's just to me, there's a different look. And, and I, I already know when I'm using a water-based dye in any of my layout or any of my artwork, I know if I use a India ink and I know when I used a water-based dye inks. And also this is because I have been using it for a long time. So if you're the same way, I mean, start with your favorite colors. You don't have to buy the whole set, you know, the whole color is available. Um, just pick your favorite colors and choose and go. And I think the more you do this, pick two colors. You don't have to buy a whole lot more, just one, just so you can try it, test it out, um, see what works the best for you. Because at the end of the day, what matters is what really works for you, right? So it's not what my, um, what is my favorite or what's my impression is or my opinion. Um, what, my, what matters most is that what works best for you for whatever needs you have. So whether it's for lettering, whether it's for journaling or doing an artwork, um, 
at the end of the day, it's your choice and your decision. But I hope that this was helpful. You know, it was um very, I was that was a lot of information. I feel like sometimes when I go through lessons like this, when there's just so much, uh, I feel like there's so much information. I hope that you were able to pick up some extra tips in here, um, some ideas. But again, thank you so much for joining us. On behalf of Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores, as always, we thank you for being here and joining our class. Um, I hope to see you again next week because this month we're going to have so much fun classes. And of course, um, I hope I'll see you there again. Same time, five o'clock Central Standard. Um, my name is Leigh Bella Rolson. It's been an honor. So I hope to see you again next time. Stay creative and stay happy. Bye, everyone.